Hello Juniors and welcome back to Computer Systems and Programming. For this video, we're going to be going over logical operators. So again, we talked about this at Cohort and we talked about the three logical operators AND, OR, and NOT, and we kind of understood them on a general concept basis. Now we're going to be talking about how you actually use them in uh, practice. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't already done so, is make a logical operators project folder by going file new pydev project name it logical operators um, and then click finish remember that I already have one so I'm not going to make one then uh, clicking on your logical operators you're going to make a file new pydev module you're going to name this practice logical oops logical operators then you're going to click finish. It'll make that inside of that project folder and it'll pop up in your editor. So we're going to be going over the same things that we uh, talked about um, kind of with the uh, comparison operators, just kind of adding these things together and using them in combination with the comparison operators to make bigger statements. So let's first just understand them on a basis. So if we have true and true, that will equal, whoops, a, if we print a, that will come out, whoops, and then make sure you are clicked on your module, you do file or, or do the drop down, run as Python run. So a comes out to be true. Because remember for and both sides have to be true so if I did a equals true and false and then I printed a it's going to turn false because not both sides of the equation are true again I like to think about it as having these parentheses so it kind of helps you section them off so you know okay a equals true on this side and then er, this equals true and then this side equals false, so it can't happen because the and needs both sides. Again, let's copy this and try this with or. So if we did this with or, and then we did this with or, and we'll change this one to true. <clears throat> so basically, for each one of these, there are three options there's both sides can be true one side can be false and then both sides can be false so if we run this um it's going to be true false false because and needs both sides to always be true then um let me just add some or let's add and up here so we can kind of read this print out better so for and both sides when both sides are true it's true when one side is false it's false when both sides are false it's false um we'll add some space in between there um for this one when let's run this now when both sides are true it returns true when one side is true it returns true but only when both sides are false does it return false. So for or, you only need one of the two sides to equal true. So in this one, one of the two sides is true. In this one, one of the two sides is true. It's this the left side. But in this one, neither of the sides are true, so it returns false. And then the last one is not. So let me print out not. And this just does the opposite. So if we do a equals not false, it's going to return true. Um, let's print out a. And if we print, and if we say a equals not true, we're going to print out uh, a again. And I accidentally imported this true, so I'm going to delete that. That'll happen a lot during the drills, so make sure you delete that at the very end. But then if I run this for not, it just flips it so it does the opposite not true not false not true not false equals true not true equals false it's 
kind of like a tongue twister, but it makes sense if you just think about it. So that's how you would do it with normal Boolean data. Uh, most times you'll be working with comparisons though. So let's look at how this would look with that. So if we say A equals, we can say four equals equals five. And if you want, you can add these parentheses to kind of facilitate that um, understanding. And then you can say, and uh, five equals five. So now you can, if I print out A, we can figure out what the answer is gonna be. Although I'm gonna add just a test thing down below so that we know it's broken up. Or maybe I'll just add a line. Ooh, that makes more sense. So we know that this side equals false. So we can kind of, let's add this in comments down here. So this side equals false. This side equals true. So if one of the sides is false and one of the sides is true and it's an and, we know that it's gonna come out to be false. So let's try this again. Let's just copy this whole thing and put it down here. So now let's say hey, this is five. So five equals five comes out to true. Both sides are true. So then it turns out to be true. Let's try both of these. Let's copy both of these down here and try it with or. So in this one, this one right here, we know one side is false, one side is true, but or only needs one to be true, so it turns out true. For this one, um, both sides are true, and or only needs one side, so it comes out to be true. If both sides were false, let's change this one and say both sides are false. You can run it and it'll change to false because both sides are false and you only need, you for or you need one side to be true and it's not. Finally, the last one, we can add another one of these uh, lines here just to break up our data. But the last one is not. So if we say not four equals five, we can say that this turns out to be false. Whoops, not flash, false. So the opposite of false is true. So the last thing is true. So again, it's not a crazy concept. It's just combining multiple different um, comparisons. So it, we started off with these Booleans just to understand the true and false side. Then we got into more complex comparisons. Um, so we have this comparison and this comparison, and it's easiest if we figure out one side, figure out the other side, and then we can figure out as a group, what does that equal, depending on which is which logical operator we're using. So once you feel like you have an understanding on this, you can play more with it, try other things, test it out. Um, you can move on to the logical operators drills. So for this, you're just going to be comparing in strings, lists, um, uh, you'll be comparing booleans, uh, lists again, um, integers. So you'll go through, do these first 10, where you'll actually be making these comparisons and writing it below it. Then you'll be, um, you'll be the next section, you'll be figuring out what the actual answer is. So you'll be looking at this side, looking at this side and deciding, okay, is that false or true? And figuring out, and then they'll get more complex and you'll have to figure out which one it is. So once you've finished that, you can go on to debugging logical operators and you can find what's wrong with it. Remember, notice that a lot of these have capitalized letters. All of our logical operators are always lowercase. So it's always a lowercase or, not a capital or. See, because it doesn't even recognize that, but it recognizes this one because you can tell because it changes its color. So keep that in mind when you're doing the debug logical operators. Keep in mind that you can't have spaces um, in between the comparison operators. That's from the last debug, but you got to keep all of this in mind while working on it. Again, if you uh, once you finish those, you can submit them. Uh, you're going to 
upload them to GitHub by going to your GitHub desktop, turning the logical operators project folder into a repository, then pushing that repository onto github.com, then making that repository public and sharing that link with me on Canvas. If you have any questions, refer to the activity prompt and it has step-by-step -step instructions for it. If that doesn't make sense, refer to the GitHub video and that has step-by-step -step instructions to it. And if all else fails, um, ask a friend and they should be able to help you. But if none of that works, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'll answer any questions that you have. All right, juniors, I will see you later.